All right, uh, I don't know if anybody subscribes to him, but his channel is Doris, D-E-O-R-S-E. -E. Uh, his icon is a little drawing of a horse with antlers. Um, he did uh, a recent video on um, on EMP proofing his 90-something uh, Suburban. And uh, we started kind of talking about it back and forth. And I didn't want to sound like I was down on his vehicle because I, I really like those old Suburbans. I've had a handful of them. They're great, great vehicles. Things will go anywhere. They're absolute tanks. The one he has, um, I believe it's got the independent suspension. It, it drives like a dream. It'll climb through anything. But I don't really know if that's the vehicle to, uh, to try to EMP proof. Um, so I got some old cars. So I'm going to kind of go through what I was trying to convey, I think, kind of poorly um, as far as EMP improving anything. This is not going to get it. This is my 58 Ford F100. Uh, it's got a straight six engine, single barrel carburetor. Um, right there is a distributor. There's the coil. Uh, right there is a battery. I needed a battery or something else this this thing runs um, but I have to rebuild the uh, the front axle on it so it kind of wobbles all over the road so sometime I'll get time and do it I've had it for about 30 years but that's the uh, starter solenoid you turn the key uh, this wire is it this wire one of these wires goes to the key it engages that the solenoid snaps across power from the battery goes down to the starter the engine whirls um, the key also turns on and off let me see this wire which powers a coil goes to the other side goes to the distributor and there's points and condensers let's see actually this is easy to get off I'll show that real quick Right there's the points and condensers, and these open and close. Can't do this with my hand in the way. These open and close, and break the spark so that the uh, spark plugs fire individually. And that's the condenser and that's it as far as electrical parts in here so you pick up the points and condenser throw them in a box uh, maybe a cap maybe a cap and a coil all you need to make spark on this is put a, attach the battery to this side of the coil the ignition will work, the engine will run. It's got a mechanical fuel pump that runs off the engine. Pumps gas up. There's a float in here that kind of goes up and down with the level of fuel. Sprays into the carburetor. Carburetor delivers fuel to the engine. The engine runs. That's all it takes. Everything turns to shit. Put a coil in it. Put a battery in it. It's got a generator on it. I don't know if a generator would last or not. If there was some kind of an EMP burst. Um, but it's small enough you could tuck one of them away someplace too. Even if the battery's blown up. Um, from the generator to the coil. Generator, another piece. That's the regulator. Generator, regulator, regulator to the coil, roll it down a hill, pop the clutch, you got a running vehicle. Um, and this thing's all original. Whenever I've done it, I've had it for over 30 years, but every time I've done anything, I've tried to keep it original. Uh, I feel it's kind of cool for what it is. Over here, got another one. 
65 Mustang. That's another project. My son's, I got it. My son and I were gonna do it. He lost interest in it. And now it's one of those things I gotta finish someday. Um, but that ignition's been switched over to a complete electronic ignition. And uh, something happens. It still has a mechanical fuel pump right there. It's got an electronic ignition on it. Everything is in the distributor, so if you had to, you could put the distributor in a box. You know, something happens, slap in a new distributor. Everything is contained in that distributor. And that's the alternator. And, uh, so this one, carbo on gas, and right as hell, but it will probably run too. It's a 1980 Chevy. I can remember how to open the hood on it. It's a 1980 Chevy. This is a small block Chevy 350 in it. Uh, distributors all the way in the back. That's an HEI distributor. That's the coil sitting on the top. The electronic ignition module is inside the distributor. And, uh, you know, once again, put power to that wire. And the, ignis the ignition's up and running. Uh, roll it down a hill and it'll run. Um, you know, once again, you have an alternator. It's got an internal regulator on it. Um, so with a few parts squirreled away, this could be a running machine too. Um, this one's automatic, so you could roll it down a hill and it'll never start. So you don't have to come up with some way to, to get the starter happening. But other than that, it's a mechanical fuel pump. Um, Distributor's got all the electronics in it, and the distributor, or the, uh, the alternator, is, uh, you know, it's self-contained. And now, An 85 Monte Carlo. This has also got the 350 in it. Uh, that's a slightly more advanced HEI distributor, but then again, it's the same thing. Um, it's a mechanical fuel pump. Uh, distributor is completely self self-contained, except everything is in it. Uh, and there's your, there's your uh, alternator. This one's got all sorts of emission devices on it. Um, this one's also very, very much original as far as the engine goes. What made me think of doing this was the, uh, putting brakes on my Jeep. But here's where you jump into 99. And you're not gonna be able to see it. These are all the fuel injection wires that operate the, uh, the fuel injectors. Uh, everything's electronically controlled. It actually has two computers on it. Um, it does have a distributor, but the distributor is electronically controlled by a cam sensor, by a, um, 
I mean, everything is electronically controlled. So if something should happen, I really doubt that this would ever run again. Uh, the other thing is, it's got an electric fuel pump inside of the fuel tank. I don't know what happens during the Carrington event in the 1800s. All the um, telegraph lines actually burned up and melted and fell on the ground. Um, so, you know, with big balls of wire. I don't know how that works. Um, right there's a fuse block. I don't know how that would work. Uh, there's a bunch of relays. I don't, I don't know how any of this would work. I really not expect this thing to run. Should there be some kind of uh, an EMP or a solar flare or whatever. But those are the things that I was trying to bring about. Um, talking to Doris. And, uh, and that's it. If, if I something should happen, I would probably throw a battery in the uh, probably probably my safest bet would be that 58. Um, you can go up, rob a tractor supply, and find ports and condensers and, uh, and a coil because they're all pretty much interchangeable for every tractor and, and all that old shit. And uh, be on the road in a few minutes. Anyway, that's that.